Hi, my name is Craig. Uh, today on the Everyday Makers, I'm going to be kind of following everybody else's lead, but more so just getting off my butt and doing something and making a storage shelf for these Harbor Freight storage containers that everybody loves. Uh, there's a million videos out there with people making really intricate, very cool, and awesome shelving units, and I really, really wish I had the room to make them. I don't, so I'm using space that I already have to make something a little better. So if you don't want to, I get it, because there's a million videos out there. But hopefully my application will help you too. Let's do it. It is a very wet and unhappy day outside. Uh, a little bit of drizzle in the air, but I still was very determined to get this project knocked out. So I'm going to start out by setting my rip vents up. Uh, I use rip vents as much as possible. It helps me keep everything straight. If you have one, I highly recommend using it. So we're setting first 17 and a half inches. 17 and a half is the wide dimension of the shelving bottoms that I'm looking to put in. Um, these are all just going to be, basically I'm breaking down two 4x4 four four strip plywood. That's about tenth inch, quarter inch, something like that, or tenth inch, eight, an eighth inch, something like that. Um, pretty cheap wood, but it goes quick. So I'm going to rip through a whole bunch of these. And this is just the long cuts, getting the most out of the, the wood that I can. So this is my 17 and a half. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring the rip fence in. We'll adjust this now to ten and three quarters. That is the depth. That is the short side, but the, the front to back of my shelves. So I'm going to take all my 17 and a half pieces, chop them at 10 and 3 quarter. You can see the wood sticking a little bit to the tabletop. It was just, just wet enough out to be annoying without being a day stopping kind of thing. So now we got all those cut. Now comes the real unfun part. Cutting a whole lot of cuts into my vertical boards. These are actually going to be the sides of the, the shelving unit. I'm not using good old Baltic birch plywood like everybody else. This is just a very cheap shop project. 2x4s work great. Um, if you can halfway pay attention to sliding your pieces in, the gap in the middle of them doesn't matter at all. It, it's completely completely still a useful item without having to break the bank. No point in using a $60 piece of plywood where 5 bucks worth of 2x4s will do the exact same job. Start out by setting for a dado cut at one half inch height. Um, I'm going to be doing, rather than doing a dado stack or anything like that, I'm just using the same blade twice. So I'll, I'll make a cut move over an eighth inch, make another cut. So it'll be one half inch deep. That on an inch and a half wide two by four will give me a half inch cut and then an inch worth of meat actually on the two by four. And then on the center one, that still gives me a half inch cut on each side and still a half inch in the middle. So now we're gonna make a whole lot of cuts. There's a cut every two and three quarters inches. So basically, I'd go out two and three quarter, I would do one sixteenth in front of two and three quarter, and one sixteenth behind two and three quarter. So then it gives me, my line is actually centered on two and three quarters. So I started out at four, then went to six and three quarter, then went to nine and a half, etc. I just basically kept, up, kept moving up two and three quarters at a time. That gives me a two and three quarter inch spacing between the shelves, which I only need two and a half for the actual box itself. So it gives me just a little bit of wiggle room. It worked perfect.
These are the Harbor Freight boxes. These are the ones that a lot of people use and Stanley makes them also. Uh, but the Harbor Freight ones seem to be most common in YouTube videos. Everybody's using these things. Two heights of them, one short, one tall. Um, they're just real handy. They have a whole bunch of compartments inside. You can mix and match compartments, kind of make it be what you need it to be. I like them. Um, I use them for my bigger stuff. I don't use them for screws and things like that. I use them for just big chunky stuff. Stuff that's not going to slide out in between the various dividers. For me, it's big things like this that they don't slide around at all. Little tiny things, if this thing is turned at all, they're going to go from bin to bin, so that's no good. But these work perfect for what they are. The difference between kind of this video and a lot of other videos is I'm not making a whole cabinet for these. Um, a lot of people are making big, tall cabinets. They're really, really awesome. They're just not what I need. For me, I have a dead space under this countertop. Um, this is one of two rolling workbenches in my shop. I can pull them out where I need them. Well, on the underside of this, there's a lot of usable space. Big chunk right there. Perfect. Um, I can make that into basically a cabinet on its own that is out of the way, stores the stuff I need to store. It's great. So I have measured under the cabinet. Under the cabinet is 34 or 30 and a quarter inches from the bottom plate of the cabinet to the top countertop of the cabinet on the inside. These are 30 and a quarter inches. Then every two and three quarters inches, I made uh, I think it's an eighth inch joint there, eight inch slot. Uh, datoed it out, but I didn't use dado blades. I just used one blade twice. Uh, so got that chops six total. Two of them, the center ones, have dados on both sides. The outside ones have dados just on the inside. So I'm going to make a grand total of two separate separate lines of cab or uh, bins and it'll be a decent amount of storage because I also made these by doing every two and three quarter I made them so they can fit either one of the individual bins or one of the tall bins either way so you can mix and match be whatever you need it to be these are the simple shelves these work kind of different than a lot of people's that they're building uh, these are 17 and a half by 10 and three quarter I chose that because it basically goes a half inch into each side into the dados and on these bins the way they're structured there's a whole bunch of bumps on the bottom of them I don't know how you can see that there you go a whole bunch of bumps on the bottom of them but the outside corners are a longer bump this fits those outside corners so essentially it's locking it in place uh, keeping it from Sliding forward or backward too much, just giving it a little bit. It's probably got a 16th or a 32nd worth of an inch bump. I mean, like, not much. But enough to just keep it so you know when it's in. Um, so that should keep it really, really good. And I don't have to waste an entire sheet of wood doing so much extra just to slide them in and out. They, this will fit beautifully. Good use of wood overall. So, I've cut all that on the table saw. And... Now I just gotta clean up my edges because this is really, really cheap wood. This they they called it uh, subfloor, but it's basically just like uh, eighth inch or less uh, plywood. Not real amazing stuff. Perfect for this because the way this also works is all the weight for these will actually only be right here. So all the weight is only on the first half inch. Everything in the middle, pretty irrelevant. The the weight of the box itself holds that. So all you really need is all your strength is right there and right there. Works perfect. So let's get to assembling. Uh, but first I got to do some sanding, just clean these things up. The table saw blade was a little bit wet and a little bit rough tonight. So it left me a little bit jagged. We'll take a minute and sand it all out.
Okay, I have a lot of sanding. Surprising amount. Okay, this is my parts, minus this board that I was just using for a notepad. Okay. I might actually do a little on the fly change here. I'm gonna cut myself a board that is the correct dimension to fit between these. So uh, I can measure it out better, make myself a little jig. So let's find out what that dimension was. There we go. 16 and a half, I'm gonna be a little jig to keep everything where I need it to go. Okay, we're gonna preload this with some screws. Use two and a half inch screws because that's what I grabbed first. Okay. Make sure everything is correct for what I need to be. Should be. And if you're noticing that the bottom two pieces of wood are different than the other ones. What I had laying around, hard stuff. Cheap projects. Beautiful, that's what I need. Okay, so. For the bottoms, since I'm not screwing up through the bottom, because that's just not fun for anybody. I'm gonna do a little toe nailing for that. Because remember that keeping it centered is very, very, very different than Structural. So for this, I just need to keep it in place. I don't need to key, and there's no weight going on this as far as these screws are going to hold. They're just holding it in place. And I really don't care if this splits out a little bit or something. I mean, it's really pretty irrelevant. It's just a shop project for me. And like I said, structurally, it's not an issue at all. out a little, it splits out a little. Okay, there's three. Let's do the other three. And the top ones we're going to come in actually from the top, so that one will be way more of a hold it in place item. This is just, just keep it where it needs to be. Regardless, the bottom of the board is actually what's holding the weight, not these screws. If you've noticed, the screw is sticking to the end here. One of the greatest little things ever. Um, I know a bunch of companies make them. This one just happens to be DeWalt. But it's a magnetic extension onto the end of my... If I can get there close... Magnetic little adapter piece on the end of my Phillips bit. Pretty sure it's meant for drywall, but it works great for what I do. Okay. Let's put this bad boy in place after doing just a little bit of cleanup first. Okay. Welcome to Under My Workbench. Here's the plan. One of these boards. Kind of wedged under here, screwed in, slide some shelves in. Middle board, outside board. So let's go ahead and put that together. I'm do my best just to give it a little quick level, just make sure I'm shooting the right spot here. And as long as we're plumb. Got it. It's not going anywhere. I'm going to shoot a second one in, just keep them spinning a little bit. I really don't think that's going to be a problem. Yeah. 
Okay, that's one. Five more to go. Okay, now comes the middle legs. Middle legs are a little bit different. Middle legs are two-sided, so that takes a little consideration. But this is the first time we're going to do our stick in between. Down there. Okay, stick in between. Basically, this stick is the width of one of the boxes. So it's the exact minimum amount that I need. So I have to go at least the width of that stick. And hopefully not a lot more. See that? Okay. This is what we're going for. The two halves, sandwich between. Okay. Now we'll put this one in here. I'm going to start with the back this time. Make my life a little easier. I stick down. Put it up. Oh, don't tell me that. There is a support board in the way. So we're going to chop an inch and a half off these. Very doable. Now, because of that support board, we're just going to have to step up our screws just a bit. So let me grab some longer screws. Okay, got to break out the four inches for this. Ugh. Okay, four inches. Top. Start with our bottom. Well, that fits much better now. Almost like a minute to. Okay. Get our board cut there up against it. Sink this bad boy in. Okay, yeah, it's not going anywhere. Four inch screw up top. I got the magnet back on. Beauty. Okay. Got my level out. Little torpedo level works great for this. This type of thing. Take a real solid guesstimate as to where I'm at. Start that. I got a ways to go. One more to sure it up. Hit it with both. Good. Fantastic. Okay. Next guy. Same drill. Literally. Aha. That is workplace humor right there. Eyeball lined up. Keep in mind also, this is a shop project just for me, so it really doesn't need to be any amazing, but gets the job done. Okay, that's in there, so now we just need to line everything up, put our little magnet back on, screw, level it up. Ways off. Turny, turny. Right, okay. One more to help balance that out. Both of them sink good. Yes, they did. Okay, solves a rock. Beauty. Okay, one more set. These guys going in. Before we continue though, let's try one of our shelves just to make sure I'm on the right path. Like butter. Beauty. OK, 
Okay, retrieve my little stick here. This one. We'll do the back one first again because that worked out quite well. Oh, don't tell me my paint's in the way, but I bet it is. Oh, that sucks. Because that's not easy to move. Oh, perfect. God. Almost like I knew what I was doing. Jeez. I should do this for a living, I tell you. Okay. Got that guy. Now I'll put in my top screws here. Level. Here's what I'm doing so you can get a better angle of it from here, actually. Holding the level on it. Looking at that cross bubble there. You can probably barely see that. Cross bubble on top there. Uh, focus. There. That's what's going to tell me if I'm level. So I'm holding it there. Getting it level-ish. I'm figuring that out. Just kind of eyeballing where I need to go with my screw up top. down no I didn't what is wrong here I think I have one too many cuts okay remember that part about I should do this for a living I lied I should definitely not do this for a living oh that's easy I just put that in the wrong side all I did was put my old toenail there in the wrong side it should be in that side no biggie Easy fix. Okay, one more. One more time. Get in there. You know you want to. Back that one off and it would keep compressing, keep from compressing my board there. You, okay. Oh, that's much better. Okay. I just ended up right about in the same spot. You, okay. Screw so you in down here. Toenail in. Those shoot out quite a ways. I'll have to remember that. Okay, up top. Okay. Beauty. I'm good at this. Okay. Yeehaw, the hard part's done. Now view here. I can do a slide of my shell. I'm pretty sure I made enough, but I gotta be somewhere close, at least enough where I can make some later if I need. Should be real tight. If I need to, I can always fine tune them. And yes, I know I'm just asking for a splinter, but that's what I'm doing. not gluing these in place or anything. I want to make them able to be swapped back and forth if I need to.
Maybe I should use a mallet. I'm gonna get a mallet. Rubber mallet to the rescue. I think this wood's a little bit wet. So it's swelling just a bit. Yeah, so once it's dried out, it'll be decently easier to work with. Probably end up building more of these on the other side of this desk. But this is perfect. Give me better storage for the stuff that I don't use very often, but I still need to have. Perfect. And the other side of the desk is where my feet go when I'm sitting in my chair at it. So this will be out of the way. It'll be wonderful. I'm get cozy. Hose myself on that one. I'll have to take that out later. I'm having too much fun right now with this. This one I actually need to rethink just a bit. I'm just gonna have some doubles. will be singles. And I am actually going to put on, I think I can fit two more in the top. I cut slots for it, but I'm pretty sure I got the room. I need two more kind of long-term storage ones that I don't use super often. And I tend to store a lot of stuff under this desk, so it gives me room there. I can put what I need under it still. These gaps. Perfect. Let's load it up some bins. This is going to be loaded from the other side, but so give you an idea what I'm looking at. boat in. I need to reset that one just a bit. Yeah. Boat in just slightly on me, just enough to where it's kind of clogging up my clearance here. So, we'll smack it with a hammer and now that I undid the top screws on that, just a little bit of breathing room. Perfect. Our screws back in. Solid as a rock, okay. That should make that. Oh, there's my space. Beautiful. Doesn't give it too much room, but gives it just enough.
tight, but the wrapper on the outside is having trouble fitting. Might even shove that one out just slightly. Just a wee bit more room. That should be fine. Wrap her off, it should be fine. These are brand new cases I haven't used yet, so they're just in the wrapper. Saved a glass jar from hitting the ground. Look at me. I can organize this shop a little bit. Okay, that's the bins that I have right now. Plan on buying several more. And that will also join other storage I have for other Harbor Freight style bins. So I just want to thank you for joining me for today's project. Uh, these nice little bin stacks. They, uh, I'm real pleased that turned out. Cheap project. I've got 20 bucks total into it. Minus the bins, of course. The bins will add up. But yeah, I'm real happy with it, though. Gives them a space of their own. Gets another shelf free for me on my shelving units. Overall, real easy, easy project. Everybody right now is making their own version of this. This is just the version that works for my particular application. Maybe it'll work for you. Thanks for watching our video. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, reshare it, all the good stuff. Uh, we appreciate you watching, and we hope to have you back for more.